Yo, what's up, people? It's your boy P. It's one of us, Captain P67 from Twitch. We're back out with the Godsville video for you today. Um, we are going to be covering the Sword and Shield. The weapons I've already covered is a crazy long sword Godville video already. That was insane. Got a lot of love. Uh, almost on 2,000 views now. We did the um, bow. We did a crazy blast bow build. That's almost on 1,000 views already as well. Got a lot of likes in that video. Uh, a lot of people enjoyed it. It's a great, great build. You should definitely check that out. We also covered the charge blade, which again, crazy ass build. We're using the Brachydios weapons. So I do mix the weapons depending on the variants. I do explain in every video, so make sure you check those videos out. But without further ado, we're going to be covering the sword and shield today. It is a Zafi weapon again. It's crazy, crazy, crazy new, super powerful OPS build. And I'll show you why and talk you through it in a second. And uh, the reason why we're going for the Zafi over the Brachydios is one, because you can augment it a lot better than the Brachydios. We can add a lot more to it. And I feel with the Sword and Shield, it's got many variable options to it. And you've got more options with the Zafi weapons because you can mod it the way you want to mod it. And obviously mod it to your own playstyle. Um, the Brachydios is obviously very strong with raw with purple sharpness, but I love this build way better. It's got more options and we can get more out of it. And we can maximize all the buffs as well. And I'll quickly go into that for you. So what we're looking at today is a crazy, crazy, crazy powerful build from the Safi's Shatterfang. Now, as you can see, the base attack is 463. Sharpness is great chunk of white sharpness, great chunk of blue sharpness, great chunk of green sharpness But it does have the master's touch built in So you will not be losing any sharpness once you've exploited the monster And we've got a base finity of 50% which is insane uh, Base element of blast is just 240 as well And when we go into the build itself, you're looking at attack boost level 7, agitator level 7, crit i4, health boost 3, crit boost 3, weakness exploit 3, peak performance 3, blast attack 2 Heat Guard 1, Blight Resistance, Stamina Thief, Resuscitate, Guard Up. Absolutely insane. Um, it's got all the buffs you'll ever want on the Sword and Shield build. Plus a lot of uh, extras included as well. So I'm going to quickly get into the build for you. We'll show you exactly how we built the setup itself. We'll show you what I use and how I've used it. Now if we quickly get rid of this. So we get POW. And POW. And POW. So you can actually see what I've used, how I've used it, and what I've used each decoration for. So what we have gone for the Safi Shatterfang, I've used a slot of grade 3, attack increase max, Teostra's technique, so we don't lose any sharpness, affinity increase, and attack increase again. So very, very strong base sword and shield build. So could you walk and be using any monster in any situation, but blast, it absolutely destroys everything. Um, I used it on non-blast affected monsters and still many parts broken, a lot of damage, KO damage as well. Especially with the jumping down shield bashes on the head as well. It's absolutely insane. Seething Bay of Geese broke many parts. Just ran Zafi again. Broke all the parts. Mounted it twice. Um, I mounted it more than the uh, Glaive user did. And it just did so much more damage each time. So again, we're going for the Safi Shatterfang. What I've got is slot upgrade 3. So we've got in the top one, we've got Critical Vitality Jewel 4. We've got a Tenderizer Jewel 2 in there. We've used the Bracket DM Hell Beta. We've got Weakness Exploit 1 included in there, a 4 gem slot, a 4 gem slot, a 1 gem slot. We've had an Expert Jewel 4 in there, we've had a Drain Expert Jewel 4 in there, Attack Jewel 1. I will go over the buffs initially and break them all down for you in a second. So if there's something that you see, like Drain's not really used that much, but it's pretty awesome. Um, I've gone for Bracket DM Hell Beta, which gives you Agitator 2 included, a 4 gem slot, a 2 gem slot, and a 1 gem slot. We've added Flawless Vitality Jewel 4. A shield jewel two in there, attack level one, attack jewel one in there. We've got the, gone for the Kaiser Van Braces beta, which gives you weakness exploit one included, heat guard included, a four gem slot and a three gem slot. We've gone for flawless vitality jewel four, and we've gone for flawless jewel two in there as well. We've used the Kaiser Coil beta, which gives you a blast attack two included, four gem slot, two gem slot, and a one gem slot. We've added resistor attack jewel four, expert jewel one, attack jewel one. We've used the Kulv Taras Wrath Beta, which gives you Critical Boost 2, a 4 gem slot, a 1 gem slot, and a 1 gem slot. We've gone for Crisis Attack Jewel 4, Attack Jewel 1, Attack Jewel 1. We've also included the Challenger Charm, which is the Agitator Level 5 in there as well. So that is absolutely insane. And that included with an additional Agitator 2, will give you that same power. So it gives you maximum Agitator. In the Mantles, again, all my videos are the same thing. Mantles are situational. And only lasts a certain amount of time, as you can see. Duration only 90 seconds for the impact. And the temple only lasts 120 seconds. 
I've gone for KO Jewels, obviously he's impact, acts as stun effect and most attacks increases, a stun effect, plus with the sword and shield battering, again you can do crazy KO damage to monsters, stun them a lot, allowing you to do your perfect rush and do a lot more damage overall. Temporal Mantle, if you feel like you're running low on health, you can use medicine and get your um, health back up when you're restoring your health, but again, situational, modify this how you want to modify it. You can change any gem slots or jewels to suit your own playstyle, so make sure you just change to suit you and how you play. I'm a very aggressive player. Uh, I go for a lot of speed runs. If you watch my latest speed run, Nergigante with the Lance, I did 5 minutes 47 on Tempered Rune and Nergigante. I did get 4.37 the other day. I will upload that shortly. Um, and I'm always doing casual speed runs or sometimes serious speed runs, and you can also check that on my videos as well. But without further ado, let's get into the train area just to show you what it's capable of. Obviously, some of these will be activated, some will be not, because peak performance will work at any time you got maximum health. But Agitate level 7 only obviously kicks in when the monster roars. And hence why we've got a base attack of maximum attack on there as well. So you're always doing maximum DPS each and every time. Um, and obviously with peak performance on top, it's absolutely insane. Plus Agitate included, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So what we're going to go over here for you is... Change this very quickly. Change it here, and as we load in, you'll see. Peak performance activated. Now it does have master's touch built in, so you can see some numbers like 161, 182. And just various attacks. Let's go for a perfect rush combo. 156, 130, 119, 156, 182, 337. This build is absolutely insane. 182 again, and there you go. We'll have to see if we clutch it if we wish. We'll get a drop of that. We've gone this side. Another clutch claw. You can just see the numbers coming up, 52, 52, 93, 145, absolutely insane. Just with one back step up, 208, and we've added no buffs whatsoever. And again, if you look at the white sharpness, we've still got a lot of white sharpness. So unless you're swinging wildly and going crazy, you can end up on blue sharpness. But even when you do end up on blue sharpness, it still does a lot of damage, it's very strong, very strong. And that's why I love the sharpness increase included, it's absolutely insane. Like, you keep all your max on DPS, you do as much damage as you want, you keep your on top of everything. And uh, I'm just going to actually go over the buffs for you. So quickly, I said I'm talking through because we do have a lot of new players joining. And I'll go through everything and explain why I've done it the way I've done it. And you'll see why it's a super OP, crazy, 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 masterful build. Um, so first off the top, we've got attack level 7. So attack 21, plus 21, plus 5 affinity on top. We've gone for Agitator, Maximum, again you can't get any higher, these are all Maximum every time, or Maximize every time for the Maximum DPS, as well as good buffs included, which I'll go through in a second. So while active, so increases attack power infinity when large monsters become enraged, while active grants 28 plus, and increases affinity by 20%. Now we are at a base of 50% affinity, so if you add that with the monsters while it's Agitate, you're going to do 70 minimum affinity, which is crit. And then, once we include everything else, now Critical Eye doesn't need to be maxed because we're already at Critical Level 4, which gives you base 50. We don't need to go any higher. We didn't need to get this Crit Eye up. There's no point, it's a waste of slots. Because we're already at 50%, I'm going to do 100% crits every single time regardless. We've got Maximum Health Boost 3, so increasing health by plus 50. Um, critical Boost 3 increase, increases the damage of critical hits, increases damage dealt by critical, critical hits to 40%. Now, this synergizes what I was just saying a couple of seconds ago. If you've got a base attack of 50%, if you do weakness exploit on the monster, so attacks that hit the weak spots have 30% increased affinity, add that with agitate, that's 100% already. With an extra 20% on wounded parts, that's 120% crits. But if you base off 50, plus another 50, if you include these two, because obviously every time you clutch claw the monster, or you roll and clutch claw it, you'll expose the weak spot, hit it, and guaranteed 100% crits. Insane numbers. Another thing on top of that, so not only have we got maximum attack, um, Peak performance, increase your attack when your health is full. Obviously you're evading quite a lot. you got good quick rolls and you can move around a lot with the, and do different positioning with the sword and shield. It's absolutely amazing for that. So think about it. So we've got attack boost, maximum. So you're getting maximum attack 
plus maximum agitator plus your peak performance max as well so while active grants additional 20 on top not only including that we got extra blast attack so increases the rate of blast build up so we got extra 10% plus a bonus 10% plus a added status element in the build itself and we've got heat guard so nullifies its damage from heat so again that's a no brainer if you're fighting to a monster absolutely insane plus this synergizes what else we got so we've got blight resistance included in the package we've got grants protection against all elemental blights reduces duration of elemental blights by 50% which is heck of a lot especially included so not only we've got maximum dps we've got maximum defense including on that what i mentioned earlier Stamina Thief, not really used by a lot of people, a lot of builds, but I think it's absolutely absolutely badass. Increases certain attacks, ability to cause, to exhaust. Increases certain attacks, ability to exhaust the monster. Now, when you exhaust the monster, it's there drawing. It's in like a stun state, and you can do a lot more damage DPS. If you've got that included in your build, it's absolutely insane, including the perfect rush combos. So that does an additional 20% on top. So again, we've got all these crazy attacks on top with these extra buffs included. So that will give you more DPS, later hit the monster more, whether you solo it in a group. And uh, anything, that's, anything that can be added is a definitely a bonus can help you out. Now this is pretty insane as well. Where I mentioned as much offense, we've got defense. Improves evasion, reduces stamina depletion when afflicted with normal status effects. While active, greatly improves evasion. Vulnerability time, reduces stamina depletion. Uh, I tried and tested this many, many times against different um, variants, tempered, and obviously we got the Arch Tempered now, Mio. Saved my life a good few times. Helped me out quite a few times. Seething Basil Geese, I made sure I got hit many, many times over. I did not die. I did not get caught once. Same with Zafi. I was, uh, I had the monster's attention. Uh, three quarters out of the fight. Um, I did the most DPS. Didn't get caught once. Um, the only time I was close to getting caught was probably about half of my health taken off. But apart from that, we was we, we just saw I do. It was absolutely insane. So like I said, maximum DPS, DPS maximum defense included. And then I always had this in my build, like I said, anything with a with the shielding, I always had guard up. Again, you don't know when you're going to be attacked at any position. So if you've got any, a chance to block and stop yourself from getting carted, this is absolutely OP. Um, I include this in every build. And again, I've got everything else included, so there's nothing else I can include to do more DPS. So again, if you're doing a true guard build, you've got maximum offense with maximum defense. You won't get carted, you can run any sort of mission. You can obviously change the gem slots out and change whatever you build you want it to suit your own playstyle but this will cover you for guiding hands Zafi Shiva I just read it again all the parts broken I broke the head as well um, I was doing the most, most damage uh, from my whole squad again Sword and Shield uh, Seeing the base of Geese all the parts broken maximum damage didn't get carted once so it kind of speaks for itself um, and again any text that you fight another monster if as long as you can guard up against it you can save your ass many times there are a lot of unblockable attacks but if you got this included and you're not missing out on anything, I haven't sacrificed any attack. A lot of builds out there all sacrifice three marks of attack. I've never seen a full attack and full agitator and full peak performance build out there, including blast attack and other benefits. All of them are sacrificing something. So I do do my builds very intricately. So make sure you do your research and check out the builds. But again, these facts don't lie. These numbers are the craziest but more numbers out there. But just want to say a quick thank you anyway to everyone that supported me, helped me the um, donations and subscribing to my twitch channel i stream every day on twitch um i do stream variety i'm a variety streamer so i stream many games so if you're going to support me the links to follow sub or donate will be on my twitch profile but the link will that be in the description below so make sure you support my content make sure you support what i do i do stream every day 10 11 hours a day uh, i do run very different games but it's any game that you do like obviously it doesn't matter what even if you're into the game or not join the stream support the stream hang out chill uh, you can still talk about many other games while I'm streaming a different game, so it doesn't really matter. So if you're a big Monster Hunter fan and you want to run some cool missions or you want to run uh, some Zaffy missions or whatever you want to run and I'm streaming another game, just jump on the stream, have a little chat and uh, I'll help you run whatever, help you farm whatever as well. Um, I am Master Rank 550+. plus. I've played a lot of the game, did a lot with the game and uh, soloed pretty much everything in the game as well. Uh, one thing we didn't cover was the augments. I've used Affinity Increase, Health Regen and Status Build Up. So again, that works perfectly what I'm using. And again, this is what we've done. And you can see itself what I've used for the Awakened Ability as well. So thank you all for joining. Thank you for supporting. Make sure you check out my channel. Catch the P67 on Twitch. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.